Hello everyone, my name is Igor Kienitsen, and today I'm going to be presenting to you the Antares Orbital 3 rocket failure. The failure occurred on October 20, 2014, around 6 p.m. About 15 seconds into the launch of the first stage, uh, the main engine 1 went out due to the liquid oxygen turbo pump bearing uh, coming loose, causing friction right by the liquid oxygen and exploding, causing the rocket to uh, lose thrust and eventually go back to the ground and explode. Over here you can see a picture of that failure. Now let's get into the history. The entire program was sponsored by NASA for commercial uh, cargo development, uh, commercial uh, cargo services, and they partnered with Orbital ATK to produce these entire rockets. They made a $1.9 billion contract to launch eight missions to resupply cargo to the International Space Station. Orbital ATK chose uh, Aerojet rocket died as their propulsion services uh, to use their AJ-26 uh, engines uh, for the Antares missions. More about those engines. Aerojet rocket Nine acquired these engines as NK-33 rocket engines from uh, prior known as USSR and they were acquired in 1970 so they were in storage for about 40 years. They redesigned these rockets, the NK-33 on the left, AJ-26 on the right, to contain US propellants, US electronics, and a changed steering system. But as you can see, they are not too different. Uh, not too many changes were made. They acquired these rockets for $1.1 million each, and uh, they were able to redesign them to repurpose them for the uh, entire space program. So now to testing. These rockets were tested at the NASA Sp uh, Stennis Space Center and uh, went, underwent the acceptance testing program. Uh, what is the acceptance testing program? It's a testing program designed specifically for AJ-26 rocket engines to undergo different stress tests during their 55 minute burn to test for vibrations within the structural and test structural integrity uh, in, in general, as well as electronic support. Normally, liquid rocket engines undergo a delta qualification testing as per U.S. Air Force Space Command uh, for any rocket engine that's been remodified to get requalified. However, Aerojet rocket down engineers stated that their rocket did not have two major F changes, so it did not need, need to undergo this extensive, expensive uh, test, thus saving them money. The rocket uh, engine was tested in 2011 and underwent one failure because it prematurely stopped during its 55 minute, 55 second fire. And the second time was in May of 2014, about five months prior to the launch, the engine actually exploded. Both of these were attributed to the liquid oxygen turbo pump bearing uh, in the old age of the rocket engine. They stated that they uh, remodified their acceptance test to prevent future problems. However, the failure occurred on October 28, 2014 as of stated 15 seconds into the launch, the main engine went out and uh, caused an explosion, costing them about $200 million in damages as well as damages to the launch pad. NASA had its own investigation team, so did Orbital ATK to find out the main cause and the root problem of the uh, failure. And on the right, you can see the AJ-26 rocket with the turbo pump down over here. The bearing is located over here that went loose and caused friction right by the liquid oxygen storage over here, causing ignition and explosion. Uh, both uh, Orbital ITK and NASA investigation uh, stated that this turbo pump was the, the bearing was the cause of the failure, and that was also uh, stated by the data, the Delta qualifications test, which uh, uh, aerospace uh, area jet rocket nine. Uh, decided to omit. Now to my ethical claim, I have stated the facts of the accident and uh, I'm blaming Aerojet Rocketdyne under a duty ethics paradigm uh, for not holding a safety paramount and uh, not valuing as much as they valued other things. So what did they value if they did not value safety? They valued money. On the right you can see a spreadsheet of uh, the amount of cost that uh, Aerojet rocket Nine invested into their uh, rocket engine to be able to test it through the acceptance testing and 
In total, this adds up to $5.23 million. This is a big amount, but compared to the, the Delta qualification testing and that could have led to a complete redesign of the engine, it would have cost $13.5 million. That is why they chose acceptance testing program over the Delta qualification. They also valued their $80 million contract for 16 uh, rocket engines for the eight missions that were supposed to happen from 2011 to 2015. They made about $3.9 million in profit per each engine. They also valued time. For those eight missions, they had to launch a rocket about every six months. On the right, you can see a timeline of their first practice test to the first commercial resupply to the failure at the NASA center. And over here on the very right, you can see the October uh, Orbital 3 launch that was scheduled uh, eventually failed due to the same problem that occurred in previous three instances of the uh, liquid oxygen turbo pump bearing. This states that they value time and they did not have time for extensive testing such as Delta qualification testing and it saved them time and money to use acceptance testing over Delta qualification. So as I've stated, they did not value safety because to use the same engine that's failed multiple times, the failure was not addressed in any way other than a change to their acceptance testing and uh, the engineers knew about this failure ever since October 2010 when they first acquired these engines they just attributed it to a specific engine or to the old, old uh, material that was on the engine. So I'm blaming Aerospace Aerojet Rocket 9 under the duty ethics paradigm that they evaluated safety under the American Society of Mechanical Engineers Duty Ethics Code Canon 1. They did not hold safety paramount. What they should have done is they should have ran the extensive testing as required for every liquid rocket engine and done the Delta qualification program, thus preventing uh, further problems. So what are the moral lessons of holding safety paramount? In this situation, it would mean to follow up on failures that were caused previously and uh, recurring. An engineer should follow up on engineering failure, uh, especially a recurring failure, which would be indicative of an engineer not holding their uh, duty to safety and valuing safety. Thank you.